a lot about the best setup for starch applique and supplies that are the best to use for your projects. If you haven't missed any of my videos, you can find them on my YouTube channel, Campbell Soup Diary. Be sure to subscribe. Today we're going to start with the Pretty Pear block. This is a simple block that I chose because it covers a variety of techniques. Here you will be covering curves and also straight lines. You can find this block from my Home Sweet Home applique template set. I have this as a four piece template set or I also have it included in the full pattern Home Sweet Home applique sampler. You can find all my patterns on my pay hip shop. So let's get started on this block. So as you can see, I've already finished my freezer paper template. If you happen to miss how to make the freezer paper templates, be sure to visit my previous videos. Here I've done two layers of freezer paper and cut it out. The reason I use two layers of freezer paper is because it gives a little bit extra added stability and you can reuse the templates uh, multiple times for your blocks. As I mentioned before, I like to work with my large iron as well as a mini iron. So here, all you're doing is just simply ironing the freezer paper template to the back side of your fabric. You'll notice the steam function is off on my iron. What you generally do is cut about a quarter inch seam allowance around the template. Here I'm also going to cut out the center of the block. And so I just find a middle point and make a little slit and begin to cut around. I really love these peekaboo shape templates because you can make use of other fabrics and bring those into those. I'll show you at the end of this how you add the peekaboo fabrics. Okay, so there you have your shape and you're ready to go. I want to go through and actually iron that. It's come up a little bit. I'm going to iron that again and now it's ready to work with. Okay, so unlike freezer paper where you templates where you glue the fabric along the edge, you're not really having to do very many slits or um, uh, cuts into the fabric. There's only a few points that you need to, to watch out for. So for instance here, this is where the fabrics meet. You are going to have to make a small little slit. Now you can see that your fabric should be able to easily go around without pulling. So on the outer curves here, you do not have to cut slits. Normally you would be, if you were doing the glue method, you would be cutting slits every so often so that way you can ease your fabric around the template. Here you only need to watch out for when the curves go inwards. Here is for instance a spot that does need to be clipped and as you're clipping you need to make sure that you're not clipping through your template but just directly to it. That's why I prefer to use a really sharp applique scissors because you can get all the way into the template. So there's a couple places that we're going to have to cut. Here we've done a slit on this side, turn it around and do the slit on the other side. And again, here at the bottom you see the curve that's coming in, I make a slit there as well. So also any places where your template has a corner, here's a corner, and you want to cut in here as well. Here you can see the curve that's going in and I'm going to have to do an additional slit right there. And then a lot of times you can tell where you need to cut here. If I tried to pull the fabric around, I'm having a little bit of resistance. So I'm going to have to make a, a slit there as well. So when you're doing starch applique, you always need to start on the straight side of your block. I have my special bowl here again with a little bit of curve so that way my paintbrush doesn't roll away and I'm going to get started by just getting a little bit, you don't need to soak your brush, a little bit of starch on your brush and you begin to paint it on. The important thing is that, oops, you don't paint onto the shape like I just did. There you can lay your brush to the side. And here's your mini iron. 
This is a mini iron that I'm able to find in Germany. It's from a brand called Commercy. I really like it because it has a little bit thicker uh, tip to it. But the one thing you have to be careful of is do not touch this metal, any metal part of the iron. You need to make sure that your hands are back there because you will get burned. So that iron is very, very hot. So then you start, and sometimes I might use my fingers to pull back that first, and you begin to press. Through the starch, it sizes the fabric around the template. So there's the first part of your piece. This just gives stability to your template as you're going around the rest of your piece. Actually, I noticed here, there's you can feel how the fabric's not wanting to go around, and I'll make an additional slit. You want to paint in sections. I think I'd like to add another slit there as well. You want to paint in sections and you don't want to paint your whole entire shape at one time. So here I should be able to, to catch this in all one round. And sometimes I pull it over with my iron first. There are a lot of people who like to use an awl or a turning tool. Some people, they can get into it with the tip of their scissors. But you want to be careful with that to not get too much starch on your scissors or else they start to stick and won't cut as well. So as you come to a curve, you're going to do a little bit of an easing around the curve to catch that shape. So there you can see is the finished edge of the inward part of the shape. Now we're going to work on the outside of the shape. And here up towards the top, it's a little more straight. So I might have a tendency to start somewhere here on the straight part of the template. So, a little more starch on there because I want to start down here as well. So I've kind of tacked this in place with the starch and now I'm going to turn the template and come down here to the bottom part of the pair. So here I have both of those places tacked with the starch, the spray starch. So now what you're going to do here with the curve, you want to kind of ease the fabric and pull it back a little bit to yourself because there's more fabric um, just think about whenever you ease a curve with sewing it's the same concept so you're going to take the fabric and take it and pull the iron towards yourself and ease the fabric back onto the template again the same thing here where you go in front of it and pull and ease the fabric back around So now I want to do the same thing to the top of the pair. And then turn around and do the other side. Again, I like to use a very stiff bristle brush 
because it just goes on better than a soft brush. Soft brushes I would recommend if you're painting, but for this application, I recommend a stiffer brush. When you're painting, you want to go for the expensive brushes, but not in this case. I always buy the cheapest brushes I can find. I don't. I use um, synthetic bristle bristles or really kind of almost poor quality bristles because it just paints on better for this application. to the end. So sometimes I will actually, if it's a little bit larger block like this, I will actually take an iron and go back over the back side. And you can see here how you have the nice finished edges. Now some people like to applique this on by hand. I prefer to do a machine stitch because I can't uh, hand applique um, because my fingers actually go numb. But I will use either a straight stitch or a blind stitch. Most of the time I let this dry a little bit before I remove the template, or excuse me, let it cool down before I remove the template. But I'm gonna go ahead for this uh, example, go ahead and pull the template out. And again, it's just like a sticky note. It comes easily out. So if you have any little, little places where it looks like it's not laying quite as flat, I might go back over it with my mini iron and make sure that it's flat. So this is the fun part of a peekaboo shape where here you can um, either put it on your fabric as is, or you can also choose to put it in an additional fabric behind it. I love it because you can see the extra shapes in there. And what I use for that is my Roxanne glue. This is the glue based it. It has the long applicator tip with also the cover that keeps your glue from drying out. And all you do is just run a line of glue along the back side of this. And then once you have your glue on there, you position it where you want, so that way your fabric shows up and you iron it on.